In question 11, I think I would start this in point slope form. We have to do all three answers, but I would start it in point slope form because I have the slope and I have a point. So let's just write it in point slope form. So we're going to say y minus 8 equals negative 4 times x minus a negative 6, which I think we'll write as x plus 6. So there it is in point slope form. And then I think what I'll do is I'll just convert that to, to slope intercept form by distributing my negative 4 inside. So if we distribute our negative 4 inside, we get y minus 8 equals negative 4x minus 24. And then we'll get add 8 to both sides. And we'll get y equals negative 4x. And then negative 24 plus 8 is a negative 16. And then to put it in standard form, let's write that in slope-intercept form. We'll just get the x on the other side. So let's add 4x to both sides. So standard form is going to look like 4x plus y equals negative 16. And there's your answer in standard form. Now on the next one, they're giving us two points, but we start off the same way. But I think what I'll do is I will write the slope first. So to find the slope, we subtract our y, so negative 7 minus negative 3, all over 3 minus a negative 3. So when we do that, we get 10 over 6, which actually is going to be 10 divided by 6 would be 5 over 3. Oops. I just noticed I made a mistake there, didn't I? Let's redo that. Negative 7, I didn't notice the negative. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4 all over 6. So I divide that by 2, and we get negative 2 over 3. And then I think what I'll do is, just like the last one, I'll probably write this in point slope form to start it, because I've got a slope now, and I've got two points. And let's use the second point, although you could use the first point just as well. So we get, so there's going to be multiple correct answers for point slope form. So I'm going to say y plus 7 equals negative 2 thirds times x minus 3. I could have, instead of writing uh, positive 7, I could have written negative 3. Instead of writing negative 3, I could have written positive 3 because I'd have to subtract a negative there. So let's, I'm going to write that down for you too. So we could say, y plus 3 would be negative 2 thirds times x plus 3. You don't need both of these, but you need one of them. So I could have that in point slope form also. Now I'll do the same thing like I did in the last one. Let's distribute my negative 2 thirds inside. And I think I'll use the first equation here. <clears throat> so I'm going to get y plus 7, I'll write it over here, equals negative 2 thirds times x. I don't need a parenthesis anymore. I don't know why I put that in there. Let's get rid of that. So negative 2 thirds x. And then my 3's cancel. A negative times a negative is a positive. So I so plus 2. 
And there is your slope intercept. We have to do a little bit more now to put this in standard form. Remember, standard can't have any fractions. So to change this to standard form, I think what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by my fraction. I'm going to clear my fractions just like I did in chapter 1. So I'll get 3y plus 21 equals negative 2x plus 6. Notice my, the reason I multiply by 3 is to get my 3s to reduce. So I get negative 2x and then 3 times 2 is 6. Now I'll do like I did before. Let's get all the numbers on one side. I think I'll move my 2x actually first. So I'll add 2x at this point. So then we'll go 2x plus 3y plus 21 equals 6. One more step. I want to get rid of that 6. So, or not get rid of the 6, get rid of the 21. So I'll subtract 21 from both sides. Bring down the 2x plus 3y equals negative 15. And there is our equation in standard form. Now, if we take a look at question 14, I want to know which equation is represented by the graph. Now, I know it goes through the point 2, 3, so I know I'm going to do y minus 3. Well, the only one that has y minus 3 in it is choice B, isn't it? They don't have to do any extra work there because choice B is the only possibility I could get to have that in point-slope form. 